better to kick off our new feature than Patrick McManaman, founder and CEO of Canisher Insurance Services, the leading cannabis insurance program manager and wholesaler over the past 10 years. Patrick, welcome. Thanks, Jim. Appreciate you having me. Looking forward to our conversation. Let's jump right into our questions. We meet in an elevator. You have 30 seconds to tell me who you are and what you do. Go. Um, I work in the insurance business. We have a program manager that focuses exclusively on the cannabis and hemp space. We focus on property coverage, general liability, product liability. And as the industry has grown, we've continued to add product lines uh, to expand with them. Workers comp, commercial auto, uh, directors and officers, so on and so forth. Sounds comprehensive. That's why we try, uh, right? It's boring. It's insurance. Nobody cares that much, right? Until you actually need it. That's true. But it's interesting because it's cannabis. So there's probably more angles than we would anticipate. Uh, you get a lot of questions for sure. Um, you know, it, back in the early days, you used to get a lot of comments. Anytime we went to a uh, meeting with an insurance company, did you bring any samples? Why didn't you bring any samples with you? So on and so forth. Uh, but you wouldn't get, you know, it was funny. Those that would ask that question never were the ones that wound up supporting your program. So uh, definitely had a lot of unique uh, conversations over the last 10 years, to say the least. I'm sure. Also, it sounds like a lot of freeloaders. <laughs> there are a lot of freeloaders, that's for sure, especially in the insurance space, right? Yeah. So share with us, how long have you been in the insurance business and at what point did you decide to switch your focus from or entirely to cannabis and hemp? Um, so I started in the insurance business in about 2003. Uh, I was a retail agent for my family insurance agency here in Ohio called McManaman Insurance. And um, I wasn't very good, to be quite honest with you. Um, and uh, I did okay, uh, but really found a niche in medical malpractice after floundering for a couple of years. Um, and from there, you know, it grew a, to a decent, a good sized practice. Um, and then what we started to experience was the hospitals were buying all of our practices that we had insured. So through no fault of our own, we lost millions of dollars of insurance premium um, wow. that was, you know, purchased. And around that time, I've been looking for just different opportunities. Um, I started to finally understand insurance a little bit. And um, a, a friend of mine called me in October of 2009 and said he was opening a dispensary in downtown San Diego and he needed general liability insurance to um, satisfy his landlord. And I just thought he was crazy. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just said, well, hold on. He said, well, go look at this and look at this and look at this. And so I went online and looked at all this stuff. And I never heard any of this over here in the Midwest. I didn't even know this right. was going on since 1996 in California. Um, and so I then just spent the next uh, year and a half or so, just uh, every dollar I could scrape together, I got on a plane and went out to California, tried to attend any event that I could. And, um, you know, realized really probably in um, end of 2010, beginning of 2011, that this is what I wanted to do. And so I'd been selling a little bit here and there, but then decided to kind of jump feet first. And so went out and left my family business um, and started my own company around that time. Um, bootstrapped it. I was the chief cook and bottle washer for the first three years, two and a half, three years. Um, and then ever since then, you know, we've been able to, to grow at a pretty good clip as the industry's grown alongside us. Oh, outstanding. And it's a tough reach going from Ohio to California. So clearly that friendship must have been strong enough to weather the storm. Yeah, I mean, I, and I wanted an opportunity, right? It was uh, coming from Cleveland. You don't, you know, I was a retail insurance agent. You don't travel very much. You know, I was obviously traveling around Ohio and some other places in Michigan and in Pennsylvania, but you know, to get to go to California on a regular basis was um, attractive to say the least. Going to San Francisco and all those places um, was definitely attractive. And then you started to meet the people that were in the industry. And I really started to hit it off with a lot of them and, and, and felt a kinship with what they were doing. And, and I wasn't there just to sell insurance. You know, I believed in the product. Um, I've been a user of the product most of my, my entire adult life. Um, sure. And you know, I believed in what they were doing and what we were doing back then and still do to this, to this day. And that's really, at the end of the day, insurance just happened to be the vehicle that, you know, I understood insurance to a level and I had a passion for cannabis. And so I was able to put two things together that one I knew and one I loved and, and be able to create a business out of it. No, that's amazing. And that's a great segue as I know you started with working as a retail insurance agency in the cannabis space and you've transitioned Canisher to become a program manager and wholesaler so that puts you working with insurance agents in lieu of direct customers. Can you just you know, share with us how you made that decision and how that's gone? 
Yeah, it was pretty simple. I mean, you know, as we said in the beginning, I was in Cleveland, Ohio. And so I'm getting phone calls all hours of the day um, in, in Cleveland, um, you know, trying to provide insurance for people. Um, then I started going to a lot of the events and I would start to meet several insurance agents. And, you know, they were just kind of picking around and they needed information and um, I struck up a relationship with several of them. And we kind of came to a, a working relationship together that they would I could help them because I knew where the markets were. Um, and in what we could do. And so I just realized very quickly that it was much more efficient and effective for me to work with insurance agents um, who are all over the country, who uh, live in these uh, neighborhoods and these geographies, much, you know, and, and understand them much better than I ever will, um, to really kind of work with them and, and remove ourselves from the retail. Number one, as I said in the very beginning, I wasn't a very good retail agent. And <laughs> so, um, you know, it's a hard work to be a retail agent. You're on yeah. call three, four, seven. Um, you have to answer some questions sometimes where you're kind of, you know, really you're calling me and asking me this question at this time of day. It just doesn't make sense. And you have to be patient. And, you know, I just wasn't cut out for that. Um, it was just, you know, my father's an excellent insurance agent. Some of my, my uncle was. I'm not so much. So uh, I just stuck with what was good for me and what I was able to do. And I felt that I was able to um, kind of put give agents tools and resources to go and sell um, at the end of the day. Wow. So you built that business pretty much on a, you said, shoestring budget and off by yourself, what would be the biggest challenge you faced in building Canisher? Um, a lot. Um, you know, I didn't know what I didn't know. Um, and, and we learned a lot of stuff growing up, you know, building this company. I, you know, I thought I had a good understanding of what the insurance world was like. And I can say the last six years have been eye-opening at every turn um, for how it operates and who you need to know. Um, as I've kind of built it out, um, you know, it just really came down to the network that you were able to build um, and having a really thick skin. Um, I've been told no by insurance companies and reinsurance partners. I, I would say it, it's got to be over a thousand times, a thousand different companies that I've talked to uh, since we started this, you know, really effectively in, in 2010. And, um, you know, it's just, I knew I was onto something when we asked them for a business reason as to why they were saying no to this space. And there wasn't an actual underwriting reason. There wasn't any of those kind of red flags that you'd see. We don't want to ensure this industry because it's a bad underwriting risk. It was because of the perceived reputational risk uh, from the government or whatever it may be. And um, I knew that we would find eventually, as, as long as we knocked on enough doors and made enough phone calls, we would find people that were like-minded like us. And, um, took a little bit longer than one would anticipate, as everything does in the marijuana space. It takes a hell of a lot longer and a hell of a lot more money than you ever anticipate. Um, but we, we feel that you know, it was well worth it in the end. Yeah, sounds like that. Well, for our final question, I was going to grab our thought leadership theme, but you just mentioned how you slayed the cannabis industry. <laughs> what would you say is the next big thing in the industry, in the insurance industry? Oh, I wouldn't know. And I would hardly say that we've slayed anything. We are early days of this space. We are still taking our lumps all over again. You know, I know we drank from a fire hose for a while and, and, and couldn't perform for some of our agency partners. And we've been working hard ever since to try and rectify that. Um, but there's only so much, you know, we can physically and possibly do with the growth of the space. Um, but that's our key focus is to continue doing that. As I look out in the insurance world, I mean, there's just so much that's out there. Obviously, the sharing economy has opened up a whole new way to buy insurance, whether it be just for while you're using it or whatever it may be. So there's a million things, but I'll be honest, we're still so hyper-focused on what we're doing, building capacity, um, bringing on new carriers, adding additional lines of coverage for the cannabis space that I don't really spend much time looking outside where the next opportunity is. Doesn't sound like you need to. Sounds like it's been a great success and we wish you the most success going forward, including myself, since I'm on the team. <laughs> yeah, I hope Appreciate so. your time. You're a big part of that success, Jim. We need you. <laughs> exactly. Thanks for your time, Patrick. And we look forward to our next thought leadership uh, session down the road. Thanks very much, Jim. Appreciate it. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.